Oh, oh no. the board. On the board, the choo choo train. Check a look. Welcome, everybody, to Crazy Train of Thought, brought to you by the Idiots of Honest. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am your host, Ryan Wolf. We are live from Savant Studios. Joining me today, I have... Austin Torres. Austin Torres is here, the pirouetted piercer himself. Thank you so much for being here today, Austin. Also... M Malcolm. Malcolm! Malacom. Producer Malacom. Malcolm Wilson is here. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Boy... It has been a long while since I have been in the driver's seat of this shit show. And um, we apologize for having taken such an extended break. And I wrote down um, a poem. I, I made a poem and then, mm. you know, I lost my notes. So no poem today. Sorry, I'll have the poem ready for next week. For our poetry hour. This is actually a poetry podcast Ooh. now. We've changed gears a little bit. It used to be, you know, what what did we do before? Uh, Does anybody re even remember what the mm -hmm. podcast was about? Something just, about trains? I, oh. I do remember trains. Yeah. Uh, like Greyhound. No, that's a bus. Uh, <laughs> Close. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Okay, this is a podcast vaguely about video games, and we will continue to vaguely talk about video games. So, uh, Malcolm, if you will be so kind as to give me the notes for today. Okay. Well, I, I would say, Ryan, I mean, you you were so so in, in, in the depression, so like low, that you decided not to shave at all the entire <laughs> oh, time. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I think you need to show it off, though. Even if it is your depressive era, but that... Look at that thing. Look at that. Holy cow. Like, like some uh, girth. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a penis for you guys on audio. I have grown a beard. For those <laughs> mm. uh, I did. I spent the last hiatus amount of time growing a beard. I don't think I have shaved actually since we recorded a podcast. And we also moved like. We mm -hmm. have been doing some stuff on the house. Um, I got a dog. So, like, the fucking dog takes up an exorbitant amount of time. Um, and it, it, he's dope. I love the dog. Mulder is the dog's name. He's fantastic. And also just, like, I got COVID, and then I was fucking tired for, like, six months. Mm. And I'm not sure if that is... An appropriate weird. amount of time, like I don't know. I'm I'm still fucking tired. Like I come home from work, and I just want to fucking sleep. But we did all this work to set up the podcast and start the show anew. So here we are, Austin. What have you been up to? Oh, I uh switched jobs. Really? Yeah. So I'm a I now uh, am a deliverer of chips and products of chips. Okay. And not just chips, like they have like cookies and nuts and seeds and Okay. Yeah, it's So this they're, And they're international. They're big too. They're huge. <laughs> they're pretty big. Huge. They're big. really really big. Really huge. <laughs> Biggest <guys>. ever. <laughs> Biggest ever. <laughs> I work for uh Frito Lay now. Fantastic. Yeah, so I get them Fritos and I get them Lays and Oh yeah. I would want the second one over the first one. If for me, I have <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I can get you some lays, but not the kind you're talking about. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's cool. Um, now, are you the person that I need to talk to about the flavors? Because Doritos has 
so many seasonal flavors. I mean, fucking Frito Lay is like Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew has seventy eight flavors. Well, it, uh, I don't know if that's true, but it's like seventy eight flavors. Yeah, but they don't have them all. But the thing is, Pepsi owns Frito Lay and all of the other things and every, like every, Oreos, right? Uh, or is that somebody else? Is that, that might, like the one of the two things they it, don't own? I think it might be one of those because they own like a like like you said, it's a big chunk of. Of stuff that they sell is just, right, and not just pop and chips. It's cookies, cooking Taco Bell, yeah, Quaker, yeah, Taco Bell, yeah, 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 exactly. They got Quakers. They got really, yeah, they own them too. Oh yeah, they own a bunch of stuff. So where is my oatmeal flavored Doritos? Oh, you really want that? <laughs> you really want that? <clears throat> they, no. Well, they actually had one time where uh, apparently a long, long time ago they had people vote in what you wanted so they had do you remember that for the chips i people are telling me about that i don't remember that at all you don't remember it like not i mean you haven't worked I'm, there I'm, for as long as yeah, yeah but like people voted the worst fucking things it's exactly. like cappuccino mocha gravy gravy <laughs> yep people yeah it's like white gravy that. was a fucking flavor no uh none of that that it was awful. It was awful i, I think huh? maybe maybe 10 years ago our, our previous employer I'm pretty sure it was before they stocked chips. Really? Yeah. So it uh, was, that's and I, I worked there a little bit before they, and I, I would say probably 10 years ago, they Jeez. did this, this flavor off and you go online and vote for <laughs> your favorite flavors. I, I think people were just ideas. trolling. Oh, for just, sure. Just like, just yeah, like when sure. they're, when the presidential election was going on, people were voting for Harambe and stuff like that, <laughs> which that's who I voted for too. Actually. Sure. Yeah. The right in vote, <laughs> but the right in vote, it's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's, it's a, it's a circle. It just keeps on going around and around and around no matter what it is. But it's a circle. It is. It's a circle. <laughs> circle. So, uh, can you bring back the poppin jalapeno popper Doritos? Can you, is there like a drop box where you could put that information uh, or uh, like an email that I can uh, support line. Can I call Frito Lay and ask them to please stop shitting on me? You can call them, but I don't think they're gonna care. No, no, well, no. These they they're 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 uh, they're their own breed. Let's just say that. I'm not gonna say anything else. Okay. I'm at I'm at probably near the lowest level, at entry level. So what that what I say is. Uh, Minimal. Are you going to try and be the next flaming hot inventor guy? Right? Like, cause that's that movie just came out recently. About it was it was like a janitor or something. Yeah, and right? he's Mexican. Yes. It, not saying it because you're Hispanic. I'm saying it because you are the low man on the totem pole. Mm. And you could be the idea guy, right? Oh. Oatmeal flavor and Doritos. <laughs> I don't know. That's gonna work. That's not you don't, gonna work. You don't want to pitch that to him? I can, but I don't think I'll be moving on up and being a successful flaming hot guy. They haven't I'll, I'll even be the made them yet. I'll be the you guy. fucking wait. The you breakfast, breakfast. Hey, the breakfast, breakfast Doritos. <laughs> breakfast, breakfast Doritos. Can oh you make goodness. a mini and pour them in a bowl, please? Oh, gross. <laughs> Well, they got they got those Oatmeal little uh, stuff Doritos. <laughs> oh, gross. Like 3D, they're like little three D Doritos. They oh. stuff them with shit. <laughs> yeah, no. gross. But well, they got the 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 mini now where they have it in a, like a Pringle can. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I've like, seen those. Like Seven Eleven and uh, okay, I think uh, like uh, Dollar Generals and stuff like that. They yeah, got, they got them too. I haven't tried it, but from what I heard, this is not is. It may or may not be true. Speculation. Speculation. You know, it's a theory. You know, it's out there. I don't know. But I was I was told that basically the what those are, they're like little mini like triangles of like Doritos, you know, stuff like that. But all like the 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 dust and all the extra stuff that falls on the floor at the at the you know at the plant the plant. Sure. You know, they just sweep it up and they mush it together and then they, they have your little tiny Dorito. Mm. And then they put it in the Pringle can. <laughs> and it still has the FDA approved. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's all sanitary. It's all clean there. So, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know what's the problem with that. I mean, I haven't tried them. I'm not going to. No, I don't. <laughs> maybe to the listeners, don't recommend that. <laughs> so I tried to buy these Poppin' Jalapeno Doritos on eBay after they stopped making them because I was that much? jonesing for a fix, you could say. Like, I they fucking got- loved... These Doritos are so good. They hooked you on them. Yeah. Then it was probably two, maybe three 
I want to say three years ago that they had the pop and jalapeno flavor. And I don't know why they got rid of it. It was like only one kind person of, was buying them. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> kind of the tanginess of like a cool ranch, but with a jalapeno kick. Mm. And um I tried to buy them on eBay and they were going for $36 a bag, which I thought was high. That's a little high, yeah. And they were they were from Australia, which is why they were so much. So I'd have like I how would have been importing them from Australia. You and just fly there and get them in the bag, you know. <laughs> you <would> think, yeah. <laughs> so I didn't, and I'm like, oh, okay, I've had those, but I noticed while I was perusing eBay for Doritos <laughs> that they had UK Doritos, that they had flavors that I had not tried. Mm-hmm. It was like mm-hmm. uh, they got barbecue now, but I think that was one of the flavors. It was like, like I want to say. Not barbecue nachos. It was like three or four flavors that came in this fish pack. Chips. That might have been in there. Maybe, maybe not fish though. That's what they. That's what they eat. Over. Maybe vinegar chips. Oh. That maybe I don't know. We that that, that wouldn't work on a tortilla chip though. I don't remember. I don't remember what the flavors were. <laughs> it was like mm-hmm. whatever the flavors were. I had not tried them. Like there's some fucking Doritos right there. I have not tried these. So I put them on my Christmas list and I got Doritos imported, UK Doritos for Christmas, among other things. This was the only thing I got. It was very nice. My mother-in-law bought me these fucking UK Doritos on eBay and I tried them and they were basically the same as flavors we have here. I was so disappointed, so fucking disappointed and it must not have been like vinegar chip or whatever, because yeah, yeah, that yeah. was like, they they weren't as exotic as you would want them to be. And then having them here was like, oh, this is basically the UK's version of Cool Ranch. Yeah, I mean, you're not going that far for them. I mean, if you're going to like uh, China or <laughs> importing from China, Japan, those those they have some weird flavors over there. How do I even get on the Chinese version of eBay? Oh, uh Black market. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got <laughs> black market. Got a, this is a Silk Road. This shit. Where's the? I need to get on the dark web <laughs> and order black market Doritos. It turns from out the Silk Road. It turns out those UK uh, Doritos and stuff were actually just like it, it says they're from the UK, but somebody just like had it delivered it. From, oh my God. from Walmart. No, no, they no, no, no. Regular Doritos. Well, no. So there's a thing. Uh, there's a thing that I heard that uh, the UK like uh, chips and stuff. The ingredients is a lot different than the chips that we have here. Like there's a lot of extra stuff added into our chips for some reason. Yep. Uh, yep. Because of like standards. Like Red 40. Red 40. Yeah. Yeah, oh, so baby. That's on the list. That's, that's right some here. good stuff. Yeah, that's some good stuff. I like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that I guess that would be one way to tell. Right. Um, you know. Would the be the ingredients. Yeah. If I still had some of those, I would like test it and I would look at the ingredients. <sighs> but I don't. So... Mm-hmm. We you can probably you ate them all. Oh yeah, yeah. Man. I mean, I'll I'll smash a whole bag of fucking chips <laughs> in a sitting. Like I don't. Yeah. Need help consuming Doritos? Uh, yeah, I for know sure. That. I know that. Yeah, they're fucking delicious. And starting to gain some weight. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. It's all I've been eating just chips. <laughs> <laughs> just snacking on the truck. That's my yeah. diet. All right, let's move on and let's talk about some uh, video games. Okay. Non E three. Summer of Games. What what are we calling this now? Summer of Games. Is that the moniker that we're going for? Hmm. Flaming hot summer games. Flaming hot and summer, summer games, games happened, and we are here to talk about it. We're not going to give you every single game that was announced or talked about or was on a stage talked about at a press conference. We're going to give you our rundown of some of the ones that we thought were worth talking about. And some of the things we did or did not like about a handful of the press conferences that happened. So, Malcolm, if you could slide those notes on over here. Thank you, sir. I want to start with Ubisoft. Um, I watched the press conference in full, and I think you guys just kind of did highlights. So, Ubisoft's press conference was the only one that actually did a live show. 
Mm. So it took place in Los Angeles. They started with a fucking dance number. Okay, you guys missed that. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> All right. And then they had live music on stage, which is a thing people used to do sometimes. I, f- I feel like I isn't... still don't like live music. Like if I find a song or something like that, that's like the live version, I just skip it. Sure, but you missed. <laughs> like, yeah. You missed. <laughs> The Skull and Bones, it was a fucking pirate shanty. Oh, You guys missed it. I do like a good shanty. Did it sound like Assassin's Creed Black Flag shanties? Dude, I didn't play back Black Flag, but I oh. assume so. I mean... The if- shanties were top tier. <laughs> top tier <laughs> shanty. <laughs> uh, yeah, I kind of liked the, the live music portion and like... It's dumb to put on a live show just in terms of like, you got to get people in the audience. You've got to pay for the production values. Like if you fuck up, you can't re-record it. You just got to keep rolling. Yep. But there, there was something that was special about Ubisoft's press conference. And that thing was the new Avatar game. Oh. Aren't you guys so excited about the new Avatar game? I mean, I'm excited about the movies. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't give a fuck about Avatar. Avatar is stupid. The property <laughs> oh, is ridiculous. It's such it's such heavy-handed fucking like, oh, th- these first world countries are <laughs> polluting the natural environment. And like, could you hit me over the head with that any fucking harder, James Cameron? Please, back the fuck off. You know what the Navi didn't have before those people showed up? Fucking toilets. Okay? Toilets are great. You don't have to shit in the woods. Toilet paper. Also, pretty fucking good. You don't have to use a corn cob to wipe your ass anymore. We've moved on. Mm -hmm. We don't need it. So I've heard a thing that there's this one guy who just lives out in the wild, and some guy was asking him, like, how do you go to the bathroom out there? He's just like, I just go wherever I want. And then the dude's like, well, how do you wipe? Like, what do you, he's like, I don't. It's like, what do you mean you don't? What do you mean you don't wipe? He's like, yeah, I don't need to wipe. I don't wipe. He's like, well, do you ever check? <laughs> he's like, no, I don't, I don't need to check. And he's like, it just it just comes out clean and nice. Get the and, fuck out. And, and there's nothing, because that's just how they used to do it. Because he's eating just natural stuff. He's not eating all these Doritos, right. you know, Red 40 and all yeah. this other stuff. Okay. So, and the guy was like, yeah, I don't need to. I don't need to do it. And the dude's like, he's like... Do you ever just check though? Like, come on, you need to check at least once or twice yeah. before. You need to grab a leaf. Yeah, grab okay. A leaf. Yeah, exactly. Get an oak said. leaf, a good sturdy oak or a maple leaf. <laughs> Have it. You need to actually need to pick it fresh. You can't just grab it from the ground, right? You can't use uh. a crumbly leaf to check your ass wipeness. Like, <laughs> it'll just crumple on your hand. Really, yeah, like yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. And it'll get stuck everywhere. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I mean, Toilets are great. I do have to agree. Yeah, being in a uh, in a society where we definitely where they have them. toilets, yeah, it's fantastic. But I mean, they also live up in trees too. So all they got to do is just squat over the edge of the the tree and then just <laughs> let loose, shitting you know, just, on the animals <laughs> as they're running by, just fucking by, fucking you know, <laughs> blue deer runs by. There's shit on his antlers. Yeah. Can those deer talk? Do you think is like the navi can communicate with all the life that's on Pandora? Or some well, dumb shit like that, right? They have to connect their tail. It's their tail. <laughs> the tail can intertwines with whatever. I don't. It, right, that's the tentacle. tree scene from the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how they mate also with each other, is the tentacle thing. Great. Yeah, and then I think uh, then that's yeah. boring. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> <Like>, <laughs> No, let's a just tail. touch tails. Let's okay. Just touch tails. That's it. Just right. the tip. Just the tip. <laughs> <laughs> Someone finishing fast with that. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, that's how they. That's how I know they. When they get on their mounts, they have to put their tail thing on their their the animal's tail thing. So is uh, it, it's actually a story about bestiality then? <laughs> if that's how they mate, and they have to plug into their mounts. Then what they're actually doing is fucking their mounts as they mount. Well, I mean, like, they're mounting their mounts. Well, there's like there's a lot of bugs that like have only one hole for everything, like pooping, peeing, and yeah, all the other. Okay, stuff, I'm know. no entomologist, but I believe you. 
Uh, neither am I, but this, this is what I've heard. The same thing with the guy <laughs> pooping in the forest thing and not having to wipe. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it's what he says. I don't know if so he do, does that. Through the grapevine. Through the grapevines, yeah. But, I mean, I don't know where I was going with do you think yeah. it. Do you think the loincloths <laughs> facilitate the wiping, right? Because most... They choose the loincloth to wipe? Is that what you're saying? I'm going to guess that. I've not seen... Okay, but how, why don't why don't animals wipe then? That's a good question. That's a good, I don't know. I don't know. Well, that's, that's why. Question. What do monkeys do? Monkeys just fucking throw it at people, they right? They throw it at people. <laughs> exactly. And then they. So is that their... is that actually the the Navi 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 Navi? Navi. Navi. Yeah. Is that the Navi's number one weapon though? Their tail. Is their tail tentacle shit cannon? They just grab it and they can <laughs> fucking they throw, throw it. it, or they use their tail like a shit trebuchet. That. And they throw it. Why don't monkeys do that? I don't know. They'd get better throwing that. So I did not think. So this game is basically Frontiers of Pandora, I believe, is what this game is called. Yes. Avatar: Frontiers of Pandora. Yes. It's basically Far Cry Avatar Edition. You're like sliding, running, and sliding underneath branches and stuff. You can have a. I thought they called it a banshee, but then later they called it something else in the press conference, so I don't think it's a banshee. Some type of flying creature that flies, and you can you can ride it around the world. They talked about having different biomes that you could visit, like every other fucking open world game. And a lot of the pitch sounded too much like what I remember the open world in Rage 2 feeling like. And Rage 2 is a boring game uh, if you're exploring the open world. Like, there's not a whole lot to do or find or see. And they talked about, like, oh, definitely, you'll have, like, create-your-own-story stuff happen in our dynamic systems. And when they say that, what they mean is, we haven't touched this with our hands. We've used procedural generation to... Make sure that sometimes a giant creature smashes your face in while you're exploring the forest. Or there's another convoy to attack. Or there's another convoy to attack, exactly. Mm -hmm. Here's 52 outposts that are all basically the same. <laughs> and then the setup to the story is your, your Navi is uh, frozen for 15 years right after being captured by the humans and being trained in human weapons. So that's why your Navi can use fucking guns. So it looks so dumb and like doesn't, if you ask me, fit the fiction at all, right? They've got like bow and arrows and I don't need my fucking Navi to use a, a rocket launcher. Like, what is that? So, I mean, in, in the newest movie that came out, it's not really a spoiler, oh, I I guess spoiler alert. Okay, but uh, they uh, they have so they they have like you said they had those Navi like in the tanks like but they they infused it they infused human DNA with the Navi and DNA. Okay, so they put it together and then they let it grow. So then eventually that person would be able to move into that body without any trouble at all. Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. So and then because that was the big problem with. Sam Worthington's character in the first movie was that he needed yes. like technology yes. to get him into a blue yeah. person. He just went into one and it was just like, whoa, what is happening here? Yeah. But with this one, they they grew them from a little babies and then you're able to actually go into it like nothing. And then okay. and then all your thoughts go into that, and then you can actually be that uh Navi and then use guns and rocket launchers and all that stuff. And then another spoiler alert, I I think one of the guys died, but he, his human, oh, this is what it was. His human body died, but he was able to have his subconscious go into the Navi that they had created for him. Isn't that the end of the first movie? Isn't that how the first movie ends is no. like Sam Worthington's character becomes the, the blue guy? Yeah, yeah. And he is no longer wheelchair bound. He's like, fuck yeah, I can well, walk. Well, I think that was his choice. He was just like, yeah, these are my people now. I'm not going to be right. in my wheelchair human anymore Yeah, because they suck. <laughs> because they suck, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, I, 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 it's basically like that because the main the main villain dies at the end of the first one. Spoiler alert. Okay, and then he comes back, but he comes back as a Navi, 
Basically. Okay. And he's like, like it, like he doesn't, he doesn't remember himself dying. Sure. But then he, rem- like, he had to watch like videos and stuff like that to remember, like, oh, I died. What? This is me talking to myself. It it, it may <clears throat> surprise the listeners to know that I did not go see the second Avatar movie. Um, judging by my opinions on the franchise as a whole. Um, so they showed a bunch of gameplay too, and I thought that it looked fine. I don't know. I, I don't know if it was what I was watching it on. I watched a little bit of it and I felt like the graphics were not all there. Did you kind of think that too? Yeah. I thought that too in the first like like the actual trailer itself. Yeah, the, the cinematic trailer cinematic looks trailer. awesome. Exactly. And yeah. then once it gets to gameplay, you're like, oh, I don't know about this. Yeah, it I, doesn't look like next gen to me, or yes. even I mean, it's current gen now. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it kind of seemed like a Far Cry Four. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I level of graphic. I didn't like the way it looked. Because there, I think I think there's just too much going on in this game. Sure. For Ubisoft to handle. Yeah, I think so. It, and this is uh, this is massive. One of their new studios. I'm thinking this is their first game. Really? I don't think they. If they have done games before, it has not been on this scale. This will be one of the larger games that this team has worked on before. I feel like they do that a lot. Or maybe is that, is that something they do a lot? Who's the guys that made the division? Is this the division crew? Ooh. Malcolm, will you look that up? Yeah. While we're chatting here. Mm-hmm. So we can maybe uh, move on a little bit from that. We wanted to talk maybe a little bit about Assassin's Creed. Austin, you're a pretty big Assassin's Creed fan. I am. Kind of was. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of was. Kind of still is. Yeah. I mean,. After like Valhalla, I mean, it's just it's a, it's fun. You get to like attack fortresses, sieging, and all this other stuff. But it's extremely repetitive, and same thing. The open like open world itself is kind of dead. So it seemed like Mirage is the new game. Assassin's yes. Creed Mirage yes. is the new game. Yep. They're going back to the original place that you were in the first game, which is Turkey, maybe like original. Istanbul. Right? Oh, the first game. That's where it's set. Uh, no, no, that's uh, is it Italy? No, I think you're right. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I I could have the the location wrong, but it's Mirage is set wherever the first one is I think set. There's Jerusalem. It's in that Middle East area. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's in that general area. Yeah. 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 Because I remember in the first game playing and running around in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, the, I, but the, the guy that is the main character in this was in Valhalla. Okay. Too. And apparently people liked him. I thought he was all right. You know, I'm not super stoked about this game, but... Uh, what didn't you like about it? Or are you just soured on just, the... Just soured. Man. Okay. Just, just burnt out. Burnt out of being like, this is the game. This is the Assassin's sure. Creed game. This yeah. is it. I love the Assassin's Creed. And then... Well, and like those games have, I mean, the first game's like eight hours long. Like if you play just the story missions in the first game, it's yeah. a tight experience. Yeah. Like it's not this open world. Mm-hmm. We're going to give you 85 fetch quests and you're going to run around this gigantic map. Like it became that eventually, mm-hmm. but just like there were things that I didn't love playing about the first game and I'm going to be completely honest, I have bounced off every single Assassin's Creed that they have released since that first game. So I think everybody's favorite, including mine, is Assassin's Creed 2 with Ezio. Sure. That's that's where that's where it peak. <laughs> Sorry, that's peak. <laughs> that's, boy, when yeah. did that game come yeah, out, though? Was... Like 2014? Yeah, probably earlier than that. I think it was earlier than that. Jesus I remember playing Christ. It, playing it at high school because, yeah. But I mean, I mean, the, it, I mean, the the Mirage is kind of going, looking like it's going back to the roots of Assassin's Creed. Yeah, from what I can tell, it's not like Valhalla. We're a Viking warrior, and you're gonna right. pillage. Oh wait, no, we're not actually pillaging. We're good Vikings. We're not gonna do that. Um, yeah, so I feel like it's going away from that and going back to where the people want it to go. But yeah. like, I think, uh, uh, I forget what the one in Egypt is called. Um, Origins. Uh, origins, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but 
I that one was another good one. I liked that one. That one yeah. had a really really good story, but it had that open world a- aspect, and it was desert. Right. It was just all why desert. why <laughs> open world? Like <laughs> why even bother? Yeah, and it, it, it it's just too much for the AI in the game to handle too. It's just too open world, too much going on. Yeah, and they and it's not. I mean, I guess the first Assassin's Creed that was more packed and. The AI back then wasn't as good as it is now, but they didn't have so much put well, in Right. They game. didn't have to worry about, like, will this person walk off the map? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, they got corridors and stuff like that that they're yeah. they're keeping their AI to. It's just, and it's all, just a tighter experience. And all the buildings are, like, the same height in the first Assassin's Creed. Yeah. And all these other Assassin's Creed, you got citadels and stuff that you can climb right. and do a lot this. of verticality yeah exactly so i mean there's a lot more to these games but man that i mean even like the first the uh, first and second one that i would say the second one's a lot better but the first one was just mainly assassin so are you going you said uh a little bit off air you think you just wait for reviews on this one yeah i'm gonna wait for this one just okay. see how it goes and if it if it gets the same thing like valhalla where it's just open world and you know, same right. same thing that I'm not. But from what I can see, it it looks like they're trying to go back to what they were trying to do, like in Assassin's Creed One and that, Assassin's Creed Two. Like honestly, that might be the thing that would get it that would get me into to mm-hmm. it. I think. Yep. Uh, so yeah, Malcolm just pulled it up here. Massive Entertainment is the ones who made the division, so they are uh, the division and the division two, and they are the ones that are making the. Did the, you play the division? Uh, uh, I did play both of them, and I did not like them. I did not like them either. Uh, the first game, I think, is kind of bad, mm-hmm. and the second game made some improvements and just never really hooked me. I thought there was just going to be more to the game other than there was a virus and it killed everybody. Yeah. Oh. That's it. And that was and, pretty much it. And then the whole world is basically empty again. But except for a few enemies here and there. But the Dark Zone, did you do the Dark Zone at all? Or I think it's called the Dark I Zone? I did not. Like, it seemed like that was the thing that you would want to get to and play. Yeah. And I put probably 15 hours into the game and was not quite to the Dark Zone yet. And I was yeah. like, actually, I think I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> like, I realized that the Dark Zone is the thing. Yeah. And I just was ended up finishing it before I really got to the meat and potatoes. Yeah, that's that's probably what kept the game going that's probably yeah. why they made two because of the dark zone yeah just because of that pvp a- uh, aspect of it i wonder if any of that stuff will end up in in the uh yeah, avatar uh, game oh out there talking I don't about mirage uh, no oh, i don't sorry. know yeah no the avatar people are making the they're the same people that made division yep but i can i can kind of see it i mean they got you know taking shelter and stuff like that and but i mean they didn't have any vehicles and or anything that you could mount and the division the division is third person only right yeah so this will actually be their first first person game oh this because, is first person yeah oh yeah it's all first person you know you see your hands and rocket launchers and guns in front of you so yeah it's all i did not see a switch to third person a la you know fallout I did not see any of that. I just saw first person combat. So they're gonna make us they're gonna let us create a character and then we can't see them? Bingo. Yep, <sighs> you can buy loincloths, I'm sure. Can I I want a thong loincloth, please, for my character so I will never see You get different type of fabrics so you can wipe your ass. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I would like something soft. Something soft. Angel Please. soft. Angel soft. I don't <laughs> Angel. need... You got to pay for that, all right, buddy? Yeah, pay. that's a licensed tie-in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Charmin's more expensive, but Angel soft is where it's at. That's right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Two-ply. Uh, so uh, we'll move on from that a little bit. So we've got also the... Blood Dragon series on Netflix. Not a whole lot to say there, except that I love Blood Dragon. And they are going to have some, uh, like an anime kind of deal on on Netflix for, for Blood Dragon. What's that based off of? That is Far Cry 3's standalone expansion, Far, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Gotcha. Which was remastered mm-hmm. and re-released with Far Cry 6. If you pre-ordered Far Cry 6, you got the... 
You got the game. I don't think we probably need video of that one, Malcolm. Why don't you look up Star Wars Outlaws instead? That was one you wanted to talk about, Austin. Yeah. Um, what did you like about Star Wars Outlaws? Uh, so it's uh, the uh, when you have a second, Malcolm. Can you can you look up sure. who uh, made the who's making the Star Wars Outlaws? I forget what uh what a uh, team is making that. Um. But I like I like any anything Star Wars, man. I I play. I was just playing uh, uh, Star Wars uh, uh, Survivor. Yeah. I I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I'm on the I'm a, okay. Massive Entertainment is is also how many fucking studios do they have? Is also doing this too. Okay. Wow. They must have at least two teams. Yeah. Shit. Unless they're making them both at the same time. That's a good uh, idea. Yeah. Let's <laughs> sacrifice. It's probably gonna be. Work week. They're probably gonna get them mixed up. <laughs> And then have oh, a no. bunch of <laughs> <laughs> you get a lightsaber as a knob. Yeah. <laughs> you could use the force. You could Han Solo's it. blaster makes it. No, into they, the game. they they uh the lightsaber gets interchanged with the tail. So like, oh my gosh! It, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, <yeah. laughs> oh, that'd be cool. I'd I'd play that. Yeah, I'd play that. Yeah, oh, where's yeah. my crossover game, please? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's a open world. Uh, basically, I. Did it? Did they said open world, right? I'm uh, yeah. There was another open world, and there was everybody's favorite. It looked like they had world to space ship transitions in the same way that Starfield did not. Yes, I heard about that. I saw that, and they're they're showing how long it takes between uh, Star Wars Outlaw and then Starfield's. I saw a video of that. It was like okay. it was like forty seconds to go from planet to space in, in Star Wars Outlaw. Um, but I uh, I have for uh, I uh, was looking at TikTok and uh, there was, was, uh, that's where I saw the the trailer for it first. Yeah, first time. I, I don't I don't think I watched it during the uh, uh, during the during the live Ubisoft uh, Flaming Hot Summer. Okay, um, but uh, there was there was that's my favorite name for this thing. <laughs> right. The, there's a lot of people complaining that there is a woman as a main Jesus character. Jesus fucking Christ. I was like, that was like the top comments. And I'm like, are you what? serious? Like, are you guys, are you serious to get mad over there's a woman main character? And that, and that's the same thing that they're getting mad over, uh, GTA six. There's a, there's that's gonna, not even, there's going to be on the no, radar. I know that this is, that was, it's the same. They, they, they said the same thing in the comments. They're like, but then like one of them was like, Oh, Oh, the GTA Six character girl has a big butt, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, these yeah. dude. It was so these half generous people fucking trolling. It was so There's... degenerate. <laughs> so I, I that was uh, one thing that I was kind of like bummed that it was just uh not in the sense that it's a where are you going character. with this because we Uh-oh. may need to kick you off the fucking show. <laughs> no, no, no it, wasn't, it wasn't an issue that it was a female character. It was an issue that it was a fixed character and there was no customization like. That you couldn't like customize your character. Okay. If you want it to be a fixed female character, like that's fine. Uh, but like there was no uh, character customization, uh, was kind of like where I was like more so like, damn, I wish there was uh, more of that in there. Hmm. Um, and not so much, you know, damn, why do they gotta have a woman in there? <laughs> well, I assume that like there will be just like Jedi Survivor and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, like customizable outfits and maybe you can change the color of it and like Poncho. different packs and maybe you can get a little hat for your creature. Like well, I think that they're the Disney and star Wars are doing a great job by having your little like pet creatures. They know what's up. They know, what's they up know what those. fucking sells like, merch. The, Let the, me get uh, an adorable little <laughs> skittery creature. Yes. And yes. yeah, because they got BBA and, and Jedi Survivor, they got this little little creature with her and Outlaw. Yep. Got Baby Yoda. You yeah. Know, you got they, all these R two D two. I mean, if you go back to like, like the invention of Star Wars, that was actually a thing that Lucas George Lucas, like he was like, I am going to make creatures and like to sell action figures. That was actually one of his purposes in character design. Oh. Uh, was like, I want to sell action figures of these. Especially in the the prequel movies, like mm-hmm. that was a lot of of action figure design. Okay, 
So having like a little Anakin Skywalker. Little Anakin, no, little, like no, the mini. the Naboo spaceships. I remember having a Jar Jar was, Binks. Yep, uh, exactly. All the Naboo spaceships. Those, those are yes. badass. They're fucking cool. Oh my god! And he wanted yeah. to sell them. Darth Maul was looked freaking oh, amazing. Oh, for sure. You got the Zabarak oh, there. I'm yeah. sure that was invented for action figures. Yeah, I remember having that too. Oh my gosh, yeah. He's genius, genius. And then... And then uh, we got these guys taking over. I don't. I don't know if they. Uh, uh, what's his, what, what are the two guys that are mainly taking over? Basically, Star Wars. Dave Filoni and there's somebody else. I think I'm not up on my Star Wars like real life people. That if somebody's usurping Kathleen Kennedy. No, 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 no. It's John Favreau. Favreau. Jan, and, John Favreau. Yeah. Yeah. And then Dave Filoni. They're not taking over. They're still, they're underneath her. Okay. But they're the ones that are mainly in charge of most of the Star Wars stuff that has been recently coming out. Okay. And um, John Favreau did most of The Mandalorian, right? He yes. He directed a bunch of episodes yes. and... Yes. But, I mean, there's also, like, she does a lot of stuff that John Favreau and Dave Filoni don't like. Okay. Like, she, you know, she's all about the money. But these guys, they want to tell a story, you know? But... I guess maybe my biggest issue, and we don't have to deep dive into it on this episode because we got a lot of games. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, would be that I don't like the stories John Favreau is telling me in The Mandalorian. Well, that's the thing. That's the one she's been taking over. You know why? No. Because of Baby Yoda. Okay. It's, and she wants to sell, like you said, she it's wants to sell those, okay. those action figures, those Baby Yoda toys. Okay. She wants to keep it coming. She wants to keep it rolling. You know what I mean? Because he would have, it would have been, and I think also with uh, Bo Katan, mm -hmm. I think that's another thing that she wants a uh, female lead. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if you noticed, if you watched the latest season. No. Of I don't think we will because I had this conversation with Kennedy. Um, I think that there is too much stuff to watch for me to waste time spending it on things I don't like. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't mean to be blunt about it. We went through Boba Fett, man. I did yeah. one season one of Mandalorian season two and yeah. then through Boba Fett. And the whole time, uh, especially in Boba Fett, I'm like, why the fuck am I watching this? Yeah. Most of this is awful. So they're starting to call this uh, the Mandoverse because oh, okay. it's from Mandalorian. They're going to diverge all these different stories. Bo-Katan, Ahsoka, you know, all these other characters. I am excited for Ahsoka. Which, I will say that. Which I can't remember who it was. It's either John Favreau. Dave, I'm pretty sure it's Dave Filoni, but he wasn't. He was really into Mandalorian, but then Kathleen came in and started changing stuff. So he's like, "All right, I'm out. I'm gonna go focus on Ahsoka." Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's move on, Austin. You also want to talk about Spider-Man Two? This oh. was at Sony's showcase that people really did not care for. Like in terms of the overall yeah. showcase, people did not like it, but they do maybe. Seem excited about uh, well, Spider-Man Two. Well, you know these Xbox fans, which I am an Xbox fan. I've sure. been, I've had an Xbox 360 Xbox and way, way down since high school. Yeah, but you know these Xbox fans are seething over this. They're seeing the gameplay of this and they're like, "Man, why can't I do that?" Are they? You oh yeah, they're pretty jazzed about it. Xbox fans, they're yeah, je yeah they're jealous because oh, yeah. I don't like. Spider-Man. You don't like Spider-Man? Oh, I, I played so, it, didn't care for swinging it. Swinging through the city of... Didn't love it. Oh, didn't like the way God. that felt almost at all. Oh. The um, first one was so fluid. Second one was like you starting out as Miles Morales, who's just a rookie and you can okay, tell. Okay, that's, that's not the second one. That's just a spinoff yeah, of the it, first one. It wasn't really... DL, yeah. Standalone DLC. <laughs> <laughs> that one was a really short one. Yeah, I have to admit, that one was really short. But... It was good. But Venom is in this, it appears, from Ooh, some of the gameplay that we watched. Did they yeah. did they show gameplay in the showcase? I did not watch Sony's. Yeah, yeah they actually saw... I think they actually, in, in the trailer, they uh, showed a little bit of it. But okay. yeah, you actually see, actually see gameplay. And that's what I saw. I saw another video of, of an Xbox fan. Like He was just like looking at it, and he's like, man. He's like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... Oh, okay, all right. That's Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, yeah, okay, that's that's awesome. Like, come on, you know. And then you, you, I, if I didn't have a PlayStation Five, I would be pretty jealous, to be honest with you. 
Okay. I know, I know you don't. I'm, you know? I don't love it. I'm glad people do like it. I mean, for so long, we got really bad licensed games. Now yeah. it kind of seems like we're turning a corner with like, um, we had Marvel's Midnight Suns. We had that great uh, Guardians game. We got both oh, yeah. Spider-Man games. Mm -hmm. Insomniac's making that Wolverine game. We haven't, oh, yeah. we didn't get any information about that as far as I know. Mm -mm. Uh, we got the stupid ass Avatar thing. That's technically a licensed property, even if I'm not excited for it. Yeah. So yeah. there are a lot more good licensed games. It might be even tipping the scales a little bit, like good versus bad licensed games. Yeah. I mean, it's not out yet. None of these are sure. out yet. So, sure. I mean, we could still change our opinions on that. I mean, who all knows this new, this next Spider-Man 2 game might be bad. It could be. It could be terrible. I, somehow, even if it is bad... I don't think that it will, um, you know, upset too many people unless it's like a Last of Us Two kind of thing that that really did not make <laughs> a lot of people. I liked happy. it. I thought it was all right. Yeah, <laughs> and a lot of people were. Yeah, we had a we had a long had debate a long about long that. Debate about that. <laughs> yeah. Check out our uh, game of the year twenty twenty one. I think that was. Uh, or twenty twenty. I don't remember the last time we sat down to do game of the year. That's while ago yeah but yeah anyway on to spider-man 2 i mean we got the trailer playing here some gameplay just jumps into gameplay here it looks fine it looks yeah. like i mean it's a good visually it is a very good looking game even the first game having been a ps4 game mm -hmm. that came to ps5 i thought it looked really good i just for whatever reason didn't love the the swinging. I know a lot of people liked it, but oh man, I wasn't one of them. Pure ecstasy swinging through there. Were you on ecstasy? Because I can see why you would get more enjoyment out of it if you were high. I can't say that. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> you were a fan of Dragon's Dogma. Um, Did you play that game? I <laughs> I've never beat it. I've okay. uh, I've I I. <laughs> I think I've restarted it like three times, but I can just, I just, I can't get to the point to finish it. Yeah. But I, I do like the combat system and the aspect of you can create a character and it's all story driven and, uh, you can, it's open world. You can choose what you want to do. One of the main things I like about it is you can jump onto giant monsters and just start stabbing them. You just stab them over and over again. Then they shake you off. Then you just jump back on them and start climbing on them and start stabbing them again. <laughs> that, that, that's what really hooked me to the game was just like, I could jump onto these monsters and just start going ham on that thing. I don't so, do a lot of damage, but sure, I, but I, I'm going ham on it. And it makes you feel real good. So Dragon's Dogma 2 colon Monster Stabber. <laughs> that's <laughs> kind <laughs> of... The type of game that you're looking for. I want more stabbing, yeah. This one was a, a huge surprise for me coming out of Capcom Showcase. Yeah. Like, who <laughs> remembers Dragon's Dogma? So I had to look this up because I was pretty sure I had this right in my head. Dragon's Dogma came out in 2012, a year after Skyrim, and it was the same year that The Witcher 2 had its Xbox release mm. and the same year the Kingdoms of Amalur the Reckoning came out. So between 2011 with the launch of Skyrim, which I think was late too, it was like fall 2011. And then 2012, you got four open world, huge games to explore. And I think the thing with Dragon's Dogma was it just got kind of lost in that shuffle. And I'm actually glad over the years that people have been like, no, actually Dragon's Dogma, you know, whether they checked out the re-release that came out or, you know, came back to it later after release, like, it was cool. I played it for a little while. I thought mm -hmm. the pawn system was kind of cool. Yeah, yes. And being able to share your pawns yeah. in 2012, like, yes. you know, has not even really I had not gamed on the internet very much at that time but being able to like go over and to my friend's house and get on the internet because we didn't have fast enough internet at my house I lived with my parents at the time yeah um but being able to like oh I can download this guy's pawn and have him you know play with me was cool yeah 
yep. in 2012. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm not sure it plays the same in 2023. And I think this will be out next year. I don't think it's coming out this year. But just like the things that they were saying in the showcase struck me as like already dated. So they had the co-creator of the game on there. And he's talking about like, and here he is for those of you watching on video. He's like, we can, you can have up to four pawns and you can play with your friends pawns. And it'll be like all four of you are running into battle. And I thought like, dude, you could just do that. Like you could just have a game where you play with your friends yeah. and all four of you run into battle. And then I thought about it later and I thought like, is the pawn system better than having to schedule a time? Cause I will never fucking like, even if, if they did put that in the game, which what I just said, like all four of you play at the same time you explore this dungeon, I'll never fucking do it. Cause yeah. I don't play games with other people. Yeah. But if you Austin or you Malcolm got dragon's dogma Two, and you had your pawns available for me to download. Fuck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, Oh yeah, I'm playing with Austin's, you know, stand in. And it reminded me of Forza and their drive avatar uh, system. Yeah, so yeah. the pawn is basically a drive avatar that you are, you know, that you make. It's your uh, created character. Yeah. Like, and I wondered why the drive avatar system never made it into any other games. And that seems like, I mean, it's not you. Like, I'm, right. I'm not playing with you or your play style necessarily. They didn't talk about that. Yeah. But like, I don't know. I criticized it at first, then I thought about it again later, and I was like, actually, I might be on board for the pawn system. I mean, I, I think they should still have an option of whether to do that or not, just like in Forza, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You could, yeah. Forza was like, if you're offline, yeah. you can do this drive avatar thing. Exactly. And it'll, it'll come through in updates and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I did that too. I remember in Dragon Dragon's Dogma first one that I used I used a lot of other people's pawns. I know that. Yeah. And then I created my own and then it would say, Oh, so and so has has uh took you taken your pawn. And I think you know, only can only one person at a time can use that pawn. Was that a thing? That was a thing. I think I'm you're remembering right from yeah. the first game. I'm not sure about this game. If they went into the specifics about like when you can and can't use other people's pawns and stuff like that. So I'm sure they'll have more details as as the the game comes out. I'm not really sure. I'm pretty sure they set a 2024 release date for that, though. I didn't even realize that all this other stuff came around or was, like, during that time, like Skyrim and... Well, because the shitty thing was, movie. like, I wasn't through Skyrim because I waited for all the DLC before I beat that game. Hmm. So I wasn't through Skyrim in 2012. And then um, I bought Kingdoms of Amalur and then I got Dragon's Dogma for, like, Christmas or something. And I actually never really dove into Kingdoms of Amalur because I played Dragon's Dogma. And then eventually, like, actually, I don't like either of these as much as I do Skyrim. Yeah, so let me Skyrim. put an additional 150 hours into Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, like recreate a character again. Yeah. Do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Bethesda. No, I, I, yeah, I've, yeah, I've played the crap out of Skyrim. I've bought that game like five times now. Yeah, just for different systems, and then you know, game whatever edition where it lets you get mods in it, even on console and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, yeah, and I I played the crap out of Witcher too, so I I could see why I I personally I didn't uh, really get into Dragon's Dogma when I could play a Witcher killing monsters. Right. And I probably played second to Skyrim of these four. It would be Skyrim, Witcher two, mm -hmm. you know, Dragon's Dogma, and then Kingdoms. Which I really didn't touch at all, I don't think. Yeah, I never played King I think I created a character, and I, I probably didn't make it much past that. Yeah, I I think I've wanted to play Kingdoms of Amalur, but I've never I've never played it myself. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that one also got, like, a fairly recent re-release. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, like a remaster. Um, they called it the Re-Reckoning. Oh! I, I, don't think it, I don't think it was this, Jen. I think it came out late yeah. in, the, in the Xbox yes. One generation yep i think i actually bought that and i've, I've yet i play. also bought it because it was like four bucks <laughs> yeah yeah, and yeah. Like, I, I don't know maybe i'll I, yeah i didn't play the first one let me buy it again <laughs> <laughs> 
fucking A. Jeez. Um, so yeah, we can move on from that a little bit. Let's talk about uh fa- you want to do Fable or Baldur's Gate? How much you got on Baldur's Gate? Uh not a, if I played the first one, I would say we would talk about it, but I mean not the first one, but the first half sure. that they released. Um So wait, I, explain that a little bit, because I'm not familiar so with I, that situation. So this is Larry and Studios. Baldur's Gate 3 is like a Dungeons and Dragons property. Yes. Been around a long time. The first two games, you said they were like Fallout 1 and oh, 2 yeah. kind of art styles. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, like, uh, what's it, uh, Divinity Original Sin? Yeah. Kind of like that, but way worse graphics and okay. a lot older. And that's the same studio. Divinity is Larian Studios. Oh, I didn't know that. Is what I believe so. Really? Yeah. yeah. So those guys that made Divinity are making Baldur's Gate 3. See, I mean, that's more of a reason why I want to play it. But, I mean, they they released Baldur's Gate 3 as, like, a beta. Okay. Te- technically, it's... Uh, and that's probably what, for the viewers, that's what we're seeing right now is IGN's covering some beta stuff. Yeah, and I think, uh, basically, they... It's Steam Early Access. I don't think it's... I don't think it's beta, but it's it's early access, and they only released the first half of the game. Or something along the lines of the first half of the game, and then now they're getting a full game release of it. Okay. And that's I'm, kind of a weird way to do it. Like, what if your story? I mean, you got to commit to that first half of the story. That's like, why I don't want to do it. Yeah, I don't want to commit to doing that. And then, up, oh, yeah, it just, uh, yeah, I'm gonna wait until the full game comes out, and then I'm, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna definitely get it just because of this, of the amount of people that, um. Or loving the first half of it. Really? Yeah. A lot of good buzz? A lot of good buzz of that. Okay. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I don't really like turn-based games either. That's that's not something I really like to do. Um, but this is a game that I'm willing to make a sacrifice for. So this looks a little bit... I mean, it's definitely turn-based, but it's not like JRPG, like, put you in a combat instance. Like, you're still in the open world. Yes. Exploring, and when you get into a battle, it yes. just becomes turn-based. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. So that's kind of... I don't know. I'm used to... It. I've been trying a bunch of JRPGs lately, so I guess I'm just kind of maybe used to that system. Mm-hmm. And I don't know about... You know, I haven't played a turn-based game in a long time. Like, maybe... I mean, I've like touched on KOTOR a couple of times, just like, I'm going to replay the first three hours of that game <laughs> and then like not even get to the fun stuff and then move on to something else. <laughs> what about um, XCOM? Is that is that a turn-based? It is. I think that's more of like, a, I mean, it's definitely turn-based, but I'm not, I, I can see maybe some XCOM vibes here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, I never really got into XCOM either, just because of the sure. turn-based system. I never, I've never really liked turn-based at all. Um, How much uh, exploring do you get to do? Oh wait, like, fucking Pokemon counts. Pokemon would be my turn-based game. Uh, yeah, but that would that be again with the JRPGs. Like, here's a combat instance. Yeah. You're not necessarily turn-basing in the outside world. Yeah. But sorry, go ahead, Austin. No, no, I mean, I mean, yeah, this, this. This is something that I want to try out. I mean, I've tried out, uh, what is it, uh, Wasteland 3 yeah. on Game Pass. And yeah. That was just straight, that was just straight turn-based everything. Okay. And I was just like, nope, this ain't for me. Sure. But, I mean, I get, uh, when you play Baldur's Gate, though, it's kind of like Dragon Age, where you get to roam around, you get to do those instances of uh, skill checks and stuff like that. Same thing like Dun- Dungeons & Dragons type yeah. deal. But then once the combat comes in, it's turn based. Okay, that's that's that's. I think I would have liked Gears Tactics more if it would have been more so like that, because Gears was just all like turn based, and then you had like some story and draw, you know, yeah, uh, the storyline, and then right back into, you know, your turn base. Hmm. So, but I mean, you get to create a character in this, and it's all. Like third person, and you get a party to follow you, just like in Dragon Age, kind of, and that's that's kind of what I that's what. I'm so this doesn't really look like you're controlling your character outside of combat. So what we're seeing in this video is he's he's playing on PC. 
He's just doing mouse clicks to move his character forward. Yeah. It's not like he's moving his character liberally throughout the world. And then, you know, it's not like KOTOR where your guy's running around like this is, huh? I think it's, it's because it's in a battle instance. Maybe he's in a battle area. Yeah. Okay. That, that's that could why. Be. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So there yeah. he is moving his character around. All right. Yeah. That must I, have been some sort of like battle area. Yeah. That kind of scared me. I was like, uh oh, have I, have I been watching the wrong thing this entire time? Right. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I definitely don't want everything to be turn bait. Like right. moving around, you know. I don't know. He's, oh, he's doing right that there. now. He's yeah. doing the same thing. And how would that even work on the controller? Like you just got to move that cursor around and click A? I don't love that. Mm-mm. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so, good on Baldur's Gate? Yeah. All right, let's move on to Fable. Did you watch the tone piece, I think is the way I heard it being phrased, the tone piece for Fable? What does that mean? Uh, that means that there was no gameplay. It was only a cinematic trailer. <laughs> but here is the idea of the tone of the world we are creating in Fable. I, it's not Fable 4. It's not like it's a Fable. continuation. It's just straight Fable. Fable. Not Fable 1. Fable. I, I don't know. I think I, I watched a little bit of it, and then I realized it was just a cinematic, and I was oh, like, yeah. okay, I'm cinematic. not, not going to... No. I think at one point you see a guy from behind running, and it says specifically at the bottom of the the running it's like not actual gameplay or something like that or in engine footage or whatever the fucking term they used was i i think people like that the 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 guy in the glasses the yeah richard yeah. A, uh aode i think yeah he's in he's fantastic yeah he's okay. in the, what's the sitcom he the it crowd it crowd yeah yep. he was crowd. in uh night watch yeah. with yeah. uh ben stiller yeah i like that one yeah uh he is amazing i love the it crowd it's hilarious he's yep. great in it yep. and i don't know what like my question while i was watching this was like how much is he in this game like obviously he's being used as the you know like i said quote unquote tone piece here but i don't know do we have another cyberpunk it seems like it, well that's kind of my question like Donna reeves yeah I would love him to be in this game that much. He's a chip and placed in your brain. Fable. <laughs> sure. Yeah, let's just That's the tone. <laughs> uh it seems like a lot of work for them to make this, I guess, for him not to be like a somewhat substantial portion. You know, they gotta pay him to like do the voice acting and shit. And I'm sure he's a busy guy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of kind of iffy. He could be like a mentor. What the heck? Yeah, I haven't watched. I haven't watched this yet. So he's, no, he's a giant. He's a giant. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you, that's your stand-in character there. Yeah. I'm sure we can check the YouTube comments for why in the fuck it's a woman. Uh oh. Oh man. You don't think you get to create your character? Ridiculous. Oh, you have to. That was a huge... <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we're joking. Oh, my Don't God. Don't care that it's a woman. Maybe he's the villain. That Yes, that is the way that it's pitched here. Yeah. And she okay. is sitting on his glasses, i.e. Oh. killed him, oh. is the implication there. Nice. Wow. Okay. So... That's interesting. I don't know. Fable looks like it could be cool. I am very excited for what they, uh, you know what the possibilities are for Fable, for sure. Do you think they're going to try to, like how every, kind of every game is doing now, going back to their roots? So the thing about Fable for me is that Fable 1 is a really cool game with a lot of neat ideas that fails on a lot of them. So there are a lot of especially in the second and third games that don't, there's a lot of ideas that don't really work mm -hmm. that don't. Um, and they're the second two, especially are janky as hell. And 
I Peter Molyneux was like the original Todd Howard for over promising and under delivering on a game. <laughs> he was the original uh, studio head for Lionhead Studios. Okay. And like that was kind of his thing for a long time when those games were being made. It was like, you're going to have, you know, the ability to own 62 buildings and you can raise this town up from just a town to a city and then you can be king and then it's true. and like those things are technically <laughs> true that you can do in fable three it's like and like why do you want to you, we don't really know like there's not there's not really payoffs for the systems that are in those games yeah um so here's to hoping that in the similar vein of Assassin's Creed Mirage. And like you were saying, it goes back to its roots. Like, I don't want to be the king of a city. No. I don't want any of that. I don't know that I even want to buy a house. Like, if I want that, I have Skyrim. I have Bethesda's games. I don't need that from Fable now. That's true. I mean, I mean, I feel like there's people that still like to do that, though. But I don't think it's like a majority of people that like to do that right you know what i mean like you said you could just go to skyrim download a mod and then right bada bing bada boom you're there you have a family and kids yeah <laughs> great <laughs> i can second life my skyrim character this is perfect <laughs> gonna i'm gonna die. learn to play the loot and i'm just gonna be a lootist i'm just gonna be a lootist. just walk around and just play the loot yeah that's it <laughs> if sam was here he'd rp the shit out of that oh man i can imagine him already singing <laughs> <laughs> Wild playing. Yeah. Making the sounds. Ludist. Nudist. Um, so yeah, Fable looks cool. And I think the last one we probably want to get to is Starfield. So real quick, let's touch on Angerfoot, Malcolm. Okay. Let's touch on Angerfoot and Skate Story. Did you happen to catch anything from Devolver? Oh, uh uh-uh. uh. So both of these were actually uh, from Devolver's gameplay stuff, la- or uh, sorry, Devolver's press conference last year, because I I had to go back and watch Devolver 2022 press conference to make sure I'd get the story for Devolver's 2023 press conference <laughs> because of the the through line story. It's a continuation from last year. Uh, well, it has been for the last three years has been a continued story from, I think, since 2018. Hmm. The, from since when they were doing their press conferences, it's like, here's the, here's the press conference story. And we've got a lot of gameplay here because I think it's an early access on Steam, uh-huh. um, but it's coming to consoles or a full release in 2020. Any one of these good or... Four. This is... Um, For those of you that are watching on video, this is the trailer that they had at their press conference. It looks fucking sick. It looks like the game that you wanted Battletoads to be. (laughs) And it's in that same like ridiculous ass vein. I think you're a frog, some type of frog creature. So you kick your legs Mm -hmm. forward to kick things and you have a gun. You can throw the gun. You can shoot people. And... um. (laughs) <laughs> it's apparently you're vaping with his feet. Yeah, it's just ridiculous and stupid <laughs> in the same ways that Devolver's games always are. Mm-hmm. But I think the thing that doesn't always get me into Devolver's games is like I love their marketing team and I love the press conferences, but the thing that I don't usually love is the games. So for whatever reason, I think my friend Pedro is probably the only one that I've really like gotten into as really? a Devolver game. I played some of the uh, Serious Sam and Shadow Warrior yeah. games, okay, and that just didn't didn't do it for me. Um, yeah. What about you? I I I uh. What's that game that just recently came out on, not recently, but I think last year on Game Pass, and it's kind of like Rick and Morty type? Uh, High on Life. High on Life. You know, I kind of get that kind of feeling from this. I see. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, definitely with the art style. Yes. It's very much yes. in, in that vein for like, sure. People are just dancing, and then they just explode out of nowhere. <laughs> you know? I, I, I mean, I like stuff like that. I mean, I like this 
combat system. I think you kicking and shooting and busting down doors. Oh man, like playing Call of Duty or like Battlefield and something like that. And they have like a in the campaign, they have like a mission where you have to bust down the door and there's yeah. slow mo and you're like do, 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 do. Yeah, dude, that's that's fun. pretty cool. So you yeah. just want to kick down some doors. I want to kick down some doors and, <laughs> and shoot some people or whatever. Sure. What are those crocodiles and squids and all this other? Animals? Yeah, some some type of anthropomorphic mutants, mutant creatures for sure. Yeah, I mean that uh, that looks. Yeah, from what I can see, kicking down the door. I think just kicking down the door is freaking awesome, and that door just goes <laughs> flying across the room. No, that that looks. Uh, I, I might I might try I might see how that is. Um, is, uh, usually their games are pretty, like, uh, cheap, aren't they? Yeah, they, you know, kind of a mid-tier publisher. I would think a $30 range yeah. for Angerfoot would probably be yeah. not out of the question. Without knowing how much it is on Steam, you know, kind of, that's, that's where they, they like to hit. Yeah, they never have $60. The, yeah, the- even Shadow Warrior, I think those are 40 or $50 games, yeah. if I remember right. And those are would probably be among their bigger their bigger budget games. Um, the last one for Devolver that I want to talk about is Skate Story, and um, Skate Story is a skating game, as you might have guessed. But there are not enough skating games, and there are almost no skating games that have a story. So it has kind of a synthwave vibe on the the music that's playing and the visuals for those of you who watched on video are just fucking bonkers. Like it's crazy. It's like, like a crystal person. Yeah. Crystals. Everything's made out of crystals. So the tagline is you are a demon made of glass and pain. And you also need to skate, skate the pain away. I think so. Ugh. And it seems like there's little power-ups in the world as you're skating around. You you can hit certain power-ups. And when you fall off your skateboard, you break into a million pieces. Oh. And it looks so fucking cool. I don't know if this is the camera angle of the game because the camera angle in this oh. trailer is like somebody is following you on their own skateboard. <laughs> and like just feels really cool in the way it zooms up on your character and skate story looks so so fucking cool have you seen those uh memes of like uh like saying who's faster than the flash or superman and it's the cameraman following superman and the flash (laughs) or like you get a picture of the flash running and then you get a picture of the camera guy running at the same speed as the flash, you know, just like trying to keep up with them. I have not. That that that's what I get that's what I get from that. But that looks that looks really, really cool. Like yeah. turning in yeah. <laughs> you're a demon that's pain. Like it made out of glass and pain. I don't really that, know what that, what that means. Was? But that was the I mean, wording. It looked like pain when you'd fall into millions of pieces. <laughs> But yeah, that I mean that looks pretty cool. That just reminds me of like Skate Three, you know, or yeah, you know Tony Tony Hawk Underground Skate, whatever, you know that. I mean, I got pretty into that remake, and so I don't usually love skating games, but mm-hmm. like the visuals in that just being so so unique, I think uh, I'm on board for Skate Story for sure. You want to dive into Starfield? Yeah, we can. For those people that don't know Starfield is Bethesda's next game. It's their first, the next best thing. (laughs) It's their first new IP in 25 years. They've been working on this game for a long, long time. Um, is this really like their newest IP in that long? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they bought, they bought fallout. They didn't make fallout. Yeah, they didn't. Did they? So they, they made fallout three. They made fallout. What, our idea of Fallout is. Yeah. But they bought that property. Yep. So they really don't have a lot of original IP that people would recognize today other than Elder Scrolls. That's insane. I didn't yeah. even think about that. Holy cow. I mean, they've been, between Fallout and Elder Scrolls, they've been making those games since they've fucking... Milking it. They've been... <laughs> oh, yeah. You could say. Oh, yeah. You could say they've been milking it, and they don't make that many of them. Like we were, we'll just be on Elder Scrolls uh, Six 
when that new game launches. And the same, that was one of the things that Todd Howard talked about in this presentation was like, you know, it takes us a really long time to make these games and they already put out the teaser trailer for Elder Scrolls 6 to let people know that that's on their burner. But Phil Spencer said that they're looking at a 2028 release date for Elder Scrolls 6. And they won't start Fallout 5 mm-hmm. until Elder Scrolls is done. There's only one studio that makes these games. Man, I'm going to be retired and old Dude, by that for real. time. Like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> Man... I can't wait that long. Right? What am I what am I gonna do in that time? Play Skyrim again? Uh, I could play Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could. So one thing I was uh jazzed about that they actually just pushed. We could have done this in the news section, but um Fallout London mm-hmm. is the fan made expansion for Fallout and it's Fallout 4 DLC basically. Yep. Um you can just keep playing this, it's fine, Malcolm. Um But Fallout London, they were going to originally release in Q3 of this year, and they decided, hey, instead of trying to take people's time away from Starfield, because let's be honest, we're going to be playing that too, (laughs) we're going to go ahead and push it to Q4 when people might actually have some time to check out Fallout London. It's a good idea. And after watching this presentation of Starfield, I went back and played some Fallout And then I also uh, went back and played some Mass Effect because that's like Mass Effect is probably the closest stand in of what this game is trying to be. Like you get to be on your ship. You'll also have companions that can travel with you. Yes. yes. Those those people, according to Microsoft and Bethesda, can be in your ship as crewmates or they can be used as companions But they didn't say, like, is every person that you recruit able to do both things? So that was one of my questions. They showed the robot, and they made it seem like like you would have a separate category. Like, hey, can I join your ship? And you'd maybe, like, catch a guy on a moon, and he's stranded on a moon or whatever. They showed that in the gameplay. But he doesn't say, like, can I, like, join you on your quest or whatever? He says... You know, do you have room for me on your ship? I'm not really sure what that means. Are all the people on your ship able to adventure with you? Or will there be like, you know, 10 like a adventure or, style companions? Yeah. Like uh, Mass Effect. Like Mass Effect, exactly. Where you get only a, you pick them up and then they can only come out with you. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And I was playing the remastered version of Mass Effect 1. So that was from 2007 Mm -hmm. and just the, you know, 20 some years, not even 20 years down the line, what they showed on this with like fully explorable worlds, whereas Mass Effect, you've get this, this tiny patch of square land that you get your Mako vehicle, which is awful. It's still awful. Still awful. (laughs) And then you get like maybe one structure that you can enter in that tiny patch. And then it's the same building layout every single time. And it has the same style of boxes and it could be different enemies, but not every time. Mm -hmm. And just like that was the top tier of what we could do in a game and it's not even open world. Like you transition into the building, you transition into exploring with the Mako, you transition back to your ship Uh, and it all sucks. It sucks so fucking bad and it's terrible. And the only thing that's keeping me playing mass effect one is reliving that story. I'm playing as a female character. I haven't done that before. So I don't know if I'll go through the whole thing. And I think, It'll tide me over till Starfield comes out. They talked about a September 6th release date for Starfield. Um, but what what was your favorite thing that they kind of touched on? Before before we do that, I got two Sure, things. go ahead. Hit, hit me. I got, who are you going to romance in Mass Effect 1? <laughs> and since you're a female, what are you going to do? I what are you going to do? just recently had like my first intimate conversation with Caden. And um, I... Not not remembering exactly what like all the the quests are in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I decided that I would go do Vermeer, 
uh, or Vermeer, however you pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And like, no. I got all the way through and I fucking drove the Mako off the fucking world. Oh. And I was just to the point where you have to make an important decision. And I didn't know that. So I played oh, no. all the way through again, all the way through again. And then uh, Ver- Vermeer, for those of you that don't know, you have to make a choice Big and choice. a character dies. No matter what. No matter what, the yep. character will die. Yep. And you choose between two of the characters in your party. One of them is Caden that you have to choose from. And I had not gotten the achievement yet for having completed five quests with him. <laughs> Because <laughs> Caden sucks. Let's be oh, honest. He's fucking yeah, terrible. He's, terrible. He's the worst. That's why I said you I hate him. Still. I hate him so much. Ugh. But I was like, I want to just play through this and get all these achievements the first time through so I don't have to play it over again, again. Okay, yeah. You yeah. know, I've played it so many years ago. Yeah. So I was like, well, I know that I just re redid this to get to this point in the story. Let me back the fuck up and I'll go do some quests before that. <laughs> Because there's also an achievement for um, using his neural uh, plant ability. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to get that achievement. You got to use it like 25 times. So I've got to take him on enough quests and use the neural blast ability. And then I can go to Vermeer and kill him. Um, I normally in the past games, I have killed Ashley. I played for the first game twice, mm-hmm. uh, back in the day. Yeah. And I killed Ashley both times cause she's a racist bitch. That is true. And like, that is true. Caden sucks, but he's also not a raging Better. racist <laughs> asshole bigot. Yep. So it's true. What do I do here? Yep. I can't in good conscience romance Ashley because of how racist she is <laughs> against the aliens. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm going to do you yet. You can change her. You can change her. <laughs> <laughs> He'll change for me. <laughs> uh, okay. Because if you're not going to romance Garrus, then what are you doing? Dude. That's all the ladies. D- my all the girls my like first plays through were Garrus and Rex all the way. Yes. They're so fucking awesome. Yes. They're two of my favorite characters of yes. all time. But I thought, you know, maybe I'll play with Tally this time. I've never used her, really. Hmm. She has some really good tech skills. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I'll keep the listeners updated on that I as, know who as you, I keep playing through. Well, I want to know who you, uh, okay, well, bang Okay. later. I'll, yeah. I'll get to banging somebody. Yeah, let me, let me. Know. Liara, I think, was my original um, romance option when I was a, a male character. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um. My second thing was, uh, you said Starfield, the closest thing was Mass Effect. I think so. You don't think so? I think it's, I think it's No Man's Sky. Okay. Okay. Fair. Uh, the closest game, sorry, that I played. I did yeah. not play. Oh, that's no right. You, did, you didn't play No Man's Sky. Well, I played it when it was at its worst. And, I, and <laughs> now I, it's like 10 times better. Now it's 10 times better. And I played at its best, but now it's just too much. I just, too much going on now. Really? I can't, I can't get into it. Wait, um, I mean, is that like... There's a fuckload going on in Starfield. Like you said, ships, companions, world exploration, the biggest game they've ever made. And in fact, Matt Booty came out and said that Todd Howard said, (laughs) I'm quoting him, quoting somebody else. (laughs) It is an irresponsibly large game that they've made. That was like direct Todd Howard quote from the FTC Microsoft shit that's going on. I don't know. I, I I feel like this is different. I feel like Starfield is different. This okay. is uh, No Man's Sky. I think I just have a bad taste in my mouth. From, From the launch, the of, no launch Sky, of No Man's which Sky. Which was that bad. Was all lies. Let's be fair, it was bad. All lies. He just, he just fooled us all. Fooled us all into thinking it was the game. That was kind of Sony's fault a little bit, though, for like propping it up as this game that it probably wasn't yeah. ever going to be that. Yeah. Even though even now it's still not where you want it where it needs sure. to be, but um, yeah, I feel like No Man's Sky is kind of like this at now. So is now my question uh, was is Starfield 2023's Cyberpunk though? Like all this hype, we've got we had gameplay of Cyberpunk before that came out. You know, we've got a story developer working on the game. Um, I guess the only difference would be that Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves, fair, um, but also that 
CD Projekt Red wasn't known for releasing broken games. And, they and Bethesda totally is. Yeah. So like, does... <laughs> Is, yeah, is there no way for Starfield to be cyberpunk because of how broken Bethesda's games normally are? Like, is the bar so much lower for Bethesda that it can't possibly get get to cyberpunk levels? I think you're onto something. Okay. I, th- I think, I literally think you're onto something. <laughs> I, yeah, because, yeah, but that makes sense. What? Dude, Fallout 4 was fucked. Yeah. That game was fucked for a year. Oh my gosh, Fallout 76. Also fucked. Oh my god. Similarly gosh. fucked in probably worse ways because there was nothing to do. The game was empty. Uh, and he and they were talking about how long how long it takes to make these games. Like yeah. how long have they been working on Starfield, did they say? I mean, they came up with the idea for the IP, according to Todd Howard, 25 years ago. This is a game, at the beginning of this, he says, this is a game 25 years in the making. And they have never had the tech to be able to do it. They've never had the horsepower to be able to make it in terms of like what their engine can do. And this seems like a game that started out with a much smaller focus, I should say, in terms of like, just like the things that you can do in the game. And then they thought, well, fuck, what if you could do X? What if you had a jetpack? What if you had force powers? What if you could modify your spaceship? And then also, what if you could build a base? And what if you could build a base anywhere? So I, I feel like uh, uh, Outer Worlds came out uh, too early for Starfield. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, I think Starfield was going for an Outer Worlds type deal, yeah, like gameplay, not like actual same story. Sure, sure. But then, like you said, the Outer Worlds came out. They're like, well, we can't release this. It's right. Basically we, the same game. Yeah, we can't do that. No, we need to do better. Yeah. We make it better. We We're better. making that, except that one's funny. No. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I, I think the, the, the shipbuilding aspect of this look really cool. You can add certain stuff to it, and then you can add more space for your crew. Um, and then I, I, I saw a little bit of like the space battles. Yes. There's dog fighting yeah. in the game Yeah, and you can control like, that's another thing that I feel like they were just like, well, what if you could do this? Yeah. And the dog fighting is up there in that list because they have seemed to have like pulled systems from other games mm-hmm. and made at least from the gameplay we've seen so far trying to make like the ultimate space video game. Like if you could make, if you had your choice in a, in a space video game, aren't these like all the top shit that you would pick to be in a game? Like dog fighting, you know, uh, exploring huge worlds and touching down and landing your ship. And then, uh, you know, exploring alien habitats and you can also be like a just run around, be a pirate in the space. Be a pirate. Yeah, yep. you can dock their ship and yes. take over. Yes, thank like you. That, yeah, oh, yeah. The, that the is ship so cool. docking was super, super cool. That like, was one of the things that what I a crazy thing. Yeah, or you could just blow them up and then that was take one of the right. loot. That was yeah. one of the things that I really liked about uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey was just, like just docking somebody's on <laughs> yeah. the ship and just yeah. like wrecking them. Yep. Yeah, and so like for this, that's going to be really cool to be able to do that. I didn't. Like, the ship docking surprised me, too, because, you know, they're they're showing the dog fighting, and I'm like, actually, I kind of fucking hate doing that, if I'm being honest. Like, I hate when games just throw in vehicle combat, and I think usually it ends up being shitty, because that's not how I want to interact with the worlds, generally. Yeah. Um, But then, them saying you could just drive up and get on their ship, like, that might be where I'm at. Right, like because once you uh, once you uh, take control of it, like uh, control of the wheel, it sounded like you, you that's your ship. It's yeah, now in your inventory, and you yeah. can uh, pull it up at any uh, like uh, port and stuff to be able to access that ship. Right, and the customization is pretty crazy on this because like there was like now they, uh, the one lady said that she like made it like in uh, the shape of like different animals and stuff uh, which is yeah, just yeah, so yeah. it's so like, ridiculous yeah yeah it's so ridiculous and so funny yeah uh, like that you can even uh, do that so like I'm sure there'll be some pretty wild 
Uh, like a, for you, Ryan, of course, you're going to make a penis shape. Yeah, you know? obviously. Yeah. Big uh, balls. Big balls. Yeah. That's a thruster. <laughs> no, that'll be the living quarters. That's that'll the be the living quarters. That's the living quarters. All your... Yeah. <laughs> and, <that's> be... <laughs> and the tip of the ship where you can dock into them. <laughs> yeah. Ramming yes. speed. No, it's yeah, that's the... Speed. Over and over again. That's the entry. That's the entry to the ship is the tip. <laughs> <laughs> entry and exit. Oh, my gosh. That was good. That was good. <laughs> can I get some, like... Like... Real good chords, you know, like some uh, pipes on the outside of my ship. You know to what? Simulate veins. Actually, please. what we'll do is uh, we'll actually have <laughs> Avatar on your as your shipmates for a okay. mod, okay. and their tail is now the the tail of the sperm. Ooh, perfect, perfect, you know, cool. and then perfect full circle. <laughs> <laughs> the circle. <laughs> it's a circle. Uh, I think the thing was the ships. The t- your your top thing, Malcolm. Uh, so I was really glad when they said that they, uh, had a lot of detail into food, uh, on the game, like, uh, for crafting purposes, like they, it seemed like, cause that was my concern when I was watching it at first is that like, okay, you got these big open worlds, but there's not nothing to do in there. There's yeah. it like, but when they were talking about harvesting resources and you can even make collecting refined. stuff. Yes. It was very I, specific about the stuff. Yes. And I love it. And hopefully now, Austin, maybe you can confirm this. Uh, does Frito Lay have a agreement? Are we gonna see Doritos <laughs> on our ships? Space, is those space is that Doritos? some of the food that we're gonna see in this? Space Doritos? Yeah. Uh, is that what you're talking about? Maybe space, they can maybe Doritos? that's how they'll market this. They can release their new line items in Starfield and see how it takes in there. Did you guys know that Coke made a XP flavored? Dude, I've had it. What? Did you like it? Yeah. You really? Yeah. I didn't really like it. Really? Yeah. I, what What flavor did you think it was? I don't know. I, th- I thought maybe like lime? I, I don't know. I, I, I thought it was like maybe some citrusy tang to I, the Coke this is for XP Coke? flavored. Yeah, this yeah. is Coke, yeah. Coke's been doing limited f- edition flavors like Mountain Dew because they saw how much Mountain Dew people are like, hey, that's dumb. Summer watermelon. Let <laughs> me try that. <laughs> <laughs> and then Coke's like, yeah, we can put stupid flavors in our drinks. <laughs> and so that they've been doing that. Well, they still don't have, uh, what is that, the flame retardant or like the, the same stuff that's in like fire extinguishers. They don't. They still don't have that in their Coke. What? We don't know that. No, no. What? Mountain Dew has the, the like one of the, oh, the ingredients. Yeah, yeah, the ingredients. Yeah, yeah, one of the ingredients in Mountain that- Dew is like the, one of the same ingredients in like uh, uh, fire extinguishers. Where's so, my like- berry blast fire extinguisher? Yeah, please. So, so yeah. If there's a fire, I can use Mountain Dew to put out this. <laughs> <laughs> just start spraying it everywhere. As oh, much saved everybody's life. That, you know, uh, as much as my. Thank you, Captain Mountain. <laughs> you were always my favorite. Mr. Do the do, do. <laughs> Mister Do. <laughs> do the do, Mister Do. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But I, yeah, I mean, there there might be there might be something that they put on the ships, some type of uh, Lay's or Cheetos flavored uh, space Odyssey. <laughs> That'll be a mod you can. But yeah, that. so that that was my favorite or like a most exciting thing was to see like uh, how far they go into that. Like, what is they, it just harvesting or how much can you craft and like do? They with didn't really the stuff. touch any of the crafting stuff. They were like, yes, you can pick this up. Yes, you can have a pile of sandwiches in your ship because that's really dumb and cool. But like. As to what you do with the stuff was not really specified. But that, that's what I'm curious about is what, what can you do right. like with that stuff? Can you? That's mix a good stuff? question. And I take my sandwich and put chips on it. <laughs> I, I do that already, but if I could do that now uh, in a game, I think, you know, they're on to, you know, we might be on Yeah, we, it might be game of the year territory. If oh. you can add chips to your sandwich. I... Like game of the year. Listen to me. Game I promise year. you, if you do that, it will be game of the year. And is that something that you can do in Breath of the Wild too? Sorry, Tears of the Kingdom. And will we both have to fight Troy for game of the year? Starfield, the chip game. <laughs> the chip game. <laughs> or <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom, the everything game. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Troy's been having a good time with that. We'll have him on next week for those of you that want some 
some Tears of the Kingdom coverage. That is not this show. Uh, <laughs> not this show. Not this show. I think that my favorite thing that I was excited about for this game was the gunplay. So mm. playing, going back to Fallout 4 and just feeling like how fucking stiff that game feels mm. and how kind of terrible it is actually to play. And I thought they made some improvements for in Fallout 76, but having the guys at id who fucking know about first-person shooters, I would think that they had them come in on this team and were like, hey, how do we make this not suck? Can you maybe think about, like, in terms of gun design and combat design, what would you guys do here? It seems like they took some cues from the Doom guys in terms of, like, just the way that the weapons look and the reaction that you get in using them. And because in Fallout 4, you get like 10 guns and that's it. There's no customization really. Yeah. Like you can swap out parts and it inc- it makes your guns more powerful. Yep. But it doesn't do anything. It's not like you can get ammo mods. It doesn't make bigger explosions or anything like that. It's pretty bare bones yep. in Fallout 4. So watching them... Um, you know, show the plethora of guns that you had here. Assault rifle, rifles, SMGs, silenced pistols, larger Gatling gun style guns, you know, explosive uh, grenade launcher looking guns. Uh, I thought all that looked really, really cool and definitely something that I I want to try later this year. Um, anything else from Starfield? It's it's a huge game, so I don't. We're not gonna be able to touch on probably everything, but I want to hit the highlights for sure. No, that that space boarding that that's really cool. Okay, and having mm-hmm. a bunch of sandwiches in your yes, in your, as you uh, can see storage. on there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely what I want. I mean, yes, floating sandwich. Yeah, my question would be like, they put in the building stuff so you can build bases on planets. And outposts. they had outposts. Yes, yep. thank you, Malcolm. You can build outposts on planets. And they had mentioned that the outposts, if you staff them, will gain you, um, you know, resources and stuff like that. And I thought about like going back to Fallout Four. The first thing that happened when I fired that game up was like, "Hey, oh no, Wellspring or whatever the fuck is under attack. Oh no, Jamaica Plains is under attack. Go defend oh, them." Oh stop! And I was oh. like. Fuck no. no. That's terrible. Uh, you know what I don't want to do? Winners. Make an outpost and then have it be attacked by aliens or whatever the fuck. And then have me from the whole system away drive my ship over there to save the people that are being attacked. I absolutely do not fucking want that. You can go warp speed in this, right? Yeah, you can. Oh, and you can increase your... You seconds. can modify your engine to... Uh, increase the time that you can like jump. Yeah, I saw which that. Is cool. Yeah, they mentioned yeah. that. I, I do cool. like that. I I think that's a cool uh feature that they got going on where the, you can upgrade whole entire systems, or you can just like go in and individually customize like certain aspects of your uh, ship. Which they have it on like, the bottom bottom left there. Um, mm-hmm. is that that about the power allocation? About, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I yeah. like that. You could just. And, and you can do it on the fly too, right? Like it, it's not something that you get to stop. Right. All right, get out of your ship or get out of your cockpit. No, no, I don't think right, so. They showed him here. doing that like on the fly for yeah, sure. I, that is nice then. Yeah. Super, I, super cool. <laughs> you can allocate more, re, uh, more resources to one area. <laughs> yeah. So, so the for those of you that didn't watch the video, like you can allocate resources to shields yes. or to engines or to weapons or to jumping into hyperspace. It's like uh, you maybe get... 20 points that you can spend or whatever. Yep. It's like you're, uh, he's allocating resources. All right, shutting down the bathrooms right now. So yeah. he's trying to, and they're trying to flush. <laughs> turn it off. <laughs> turn it off the AC. Turn it off the AC. Like to modify it. You know? <laughs> like just different stuff. Someone's in the shower, turn off the water supply. <laughs> <laughs> like they're all soaped up and that's just going to dry and you know it's going to feel awful. You're going to hear it from the cockpit. You fucking dick. <laughs> <Right? laughs> We're in a dog fight. We're in a dog fight. Right. What are you doing? Man the guns. You hear them running. Squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> Do you think we'll get a mod 
uh, later down the line where this can be like that Star Trek game that you played. Oh, my That VR gosh. thing that you played. Oh, gosh. Please. No. Can, can we buy VR a planet? <laughs> Can we buy our own planet? That's what I want to know. They didn't mention that. I know, but like, I, you know, you guys were talking about uh, in another game, like buying, you know, a house or whatever and stuff. Like, I, I would like to own a planet on this one. Or that. create. Like, that. actually, that'd be a cool create DLC. Create a planet. Yeah. yeah. Create your own. They didn't talk about any DLC for this game. They did talk about it being <laughs> fucking huge. Well, yeah, I mean, like, why would they have DLC for There's a game thousand that's planets. Right, yeah, yeah. We have a thousand places for you to explore, but we also have this DLC. Yeah. <laughs> like, so they talked about the thousand worlds thing, um, or places, right? Or you I said it I is. I think planet. it was pl either planets or worlds in terms of what he was describing. Because you asked me that off air. Yeah, was like, how big is this game? And they were saying over a thousand worlds to visit. But Malcolm's question was, does that count like the derelict ship that you find that's floating? in orbit above, you know, are those two different quote unquote worlds or, places or the moons to explore, of a planet or the moons. I think the moons would count. Yeah. That would be my guess sure. in what they were saying, but I'm not sure the ship would. Right. And they talked about, sorry, go ahead, Austin. Were you going to no, say you're, something? You're good. You're good. You're good. So they talked about a little bit of the, the worlds having a procedural generation aspect to them. They didn't say those world words because I think, people were really turned off about No Man's Sky, like, saying that and then being like, oh, this is actually just means it's boring. <laughs> um, so, like, say Magareth was a, a planet that just popped up on the screen here. My Magareth is not going to be the same as your Magareth. So I might go to Magareth and see, like, a science outpost and have to claim, like, battle these people in the science outpost you might go to Mag Magareth and have a cave to explore or whatever. Like you, we will not find the same things on those planets. Hmm. And I think like, I don't know how long it would have taken them to make that not the case if they had to hand make each of those, you know, encounters or whatever. But I don't love that no. because I want yeah, no. to like, as a, since it's a single player game, I want to be like, Dude, I went to Magareth, check this out. I got this badass gun. And then you go to Magareth and you're like, oh, I got a fucking pistol. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know how much that's going to be handcrafted or how much they're going to let those systems dictate what's there. I mean, I kind of feel like uh, it would be like the Mass Effect thing where you get that one outpost in that one world that you're talking about, but I go to a different world and I find that same outpost. And like, that that is kind of the way they made it sound. Like that outpost might be there like that outpost is in the game yeah it'll probably just be on a different planet when you explore it like you'll explore the science outpost that i do with the same maybe possibly with the same loot or gun or whatever yeah i don't know i don't know how much of that's gonna be dynamically generated i think might have been the term they used um so this was uh where my question of like what play what counts as places because like on this little map here there's not like there's not a thousand worlds on there. So like this is one solar system. So is it limited to just this so, solar system or are there other solar systems excuse um, me. on here? Because like... Mm. I mean, what we're looking at here, for those of you that aren't on video, we're looking at, like Malcolm said, the picture of a solar system a la Mass Effect. Like this is literally how you explore in Mass Effect. Yep. They give you an overview, blown out view of the solar system, and then you can pick a planet to land on. Yep. And that seems to be maybe what we have going on here in Starfield. But you can see the the cursor here to the left, I think, is probably where you are now. The little mm -hmm. green or blue arrow is probably the you are here indicator. It also says and then the sh show me and set course. So I think if you have that blue that blue cursor on there, you can show me what the planet looks like. Oh, I see. And, then, then, the to it? and then the white cursor, that's just ours. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure. The circle, you mean? No. Or the cursor to the right. The mouse cursor. Uh, our, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <you're> fucking idiot. <laughs> our computer cursor, you mean. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just Sorry. Stupid ass. <laughs> Tough crowd today. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's just our. <laughs> Oh, but, but there is there is that, this a long time. There is a there is a, a circle like that. That also might be. Yeah, I think you're right, Ryan. I think that that blue there's like a blue like cursor, indicator, indicator cursor. That's where you're at, and yeah. then there's like a circle. The circle is probably like I want to check this planet out. Yeah. Let me look at this planet. Okay, and it's showing here, um, kind of the side view. So you've got your your planet layout with your sun, and then I'm thinking those are moons that are attached to those planets. Yeah. And that's what you're looking at here. Um, and your survey is 37% done of this system. So uh, there's also a bounty in the... Holy cow. Too, for like uh, 12,000... Golden doubloons. Whatever the... Doubloons, doubloons. Which is kind of cool. Yeah. There's factions. Factions. They did talk about a little bit the yeah. factions in there. Um, you know, factions are a thing that they've had since I think Skyrim was probably not. There wasn't, uh, there wasn't factions in Fallout 3, really, or Oblivion. Yeah. Not but really. Skyrim had factions. You could choose yeah. one side or the other. And that, that stuff ended up mattering. The one thing that bothered me the most, I would say, about this entire presentation, like, this game's huge. All this weaponry, upgrades, jetpacks, force powers at the very end that they didn't even really touch on, possible crafting stuff, ship, like, then them zooming in and showing you some of the narrative stuff, just briefly touching on it, and the character in the video experiencing the narrative, and what you get was your fucking blinders on zoomed in look this is how bethesda players interact with bethesda characters right like yeah it's a zoomed in everything's yeah. blurred out yeah all you see is that one character on the screen yep. you get a you know dialogue tree down at the bottom four or five choices i fucking hate that mm -hmm. playing mass effect and just like how cinematic that game feels even the two th even the first game where like the camera's kind of panning around you two at the you know dynamically talking and you know it's got here here is when they're talking and then yeah. it shows your reaction yep and like all that just feels so fluid and then to have fucking starfield come in and show this oblivion version you know this 2005 conversation like i okay if that's what these games are then fine i guess but i don't have to like it yeah i mean i think they just want they want you are the character like they want you to be the one looking at this person and having this dialogue with them okay i like like unlike with they, mass effect you yeah i'm playing as Commander Shepard. Yeah. Whereas in Starfield, they want me to be me. Yeah. yeah. You are that person. You, I, did they like, oh yeah, you could create your character. Yeah. Yeah. I create a character yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yes, yeah. One thing they didn't talk about was whether or not that character would be voiced because in Fallout 4, your guy is voiced. And I think that people didn't love that. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't, I didn't hear your character speak. As far as I could tell. Yeah, I don't remember them speaking at all. I remember the, the other character speaking. Sure. Yeah. Sure, they talk at you and to you. Yeah, mostly you, at you. Yeah, because you pick your dialogue and they just... They move on. And they move on, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, so you don't, I don't think you get a voice. No this. voice character, I would say, mm -hmm. in Starfield. Because the same Or thing, your character. When, when you're communicating on your spaceship to either be a pirate or whatever, you don't you don't hear them talking over the intercom. You just hear the other person talking over their intercom. Yeah. Which, I mean, I guess, I, I don't know. I, I feel like that's just, that's just their type of game that, that they do now. Right. And maybe nobody liked that in Fallout 4. Yeah, because I guess they did try the Mass Effect style of conversation in Fallout 4. That's like literally what that oh, is. Oh, yeah. Where yeah. the camera pans out, yep. you see your guy yep, and he talks. talking to the people. Yep. And then, yeah, I didn't love the voice actor or the way a lot of those lines were delivered. Then that might be my biggest hang up with the difference between 
Fallout 4 and Mass Effect 1 is like, man, that voice acting is fucking top notch. Commander Shepard. In Mass man. Effect. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even Female Shepard, too. Yeah. They're both really. And good. I've never played as, as Fem Shep, so this is uh, my. My first playthrough. I'm I'm excited to yeah. hear Jennifer I've, Hale's I've, voice. I've done it for I've done one playthrough with the female, and I think I've done like maybe two, two or three with the male. Right. And both are really good. Yeah. I think I think I did the male like three times, and then I was like, why haven't I played the female character? How many times do you think you'll play through Starfield? <laughs> Will you even ever finish? Well, yeah, Starfield. I was about to say, will I ever finish? I was about it? To say, Is that a thing? Took him 25 years to make it. I don't <laughs> think I'm finishing in a year. <laughs> like, <laughs> And if we do, like, I need a refund or something. Sure. Like, yeah. Like No Man's Sky. They they had a version, a $300 version of this game that comes with a dumb watch. Yeah. That sold out before I literally ever saw it on sale were or gonna, for sale. Were you going to get it? I mean, 300 is a, a tough ask for a Game Pass game. He's a like, I don't want to relegate it to that. He's a whale. But he you can also... It. Uh, and I'll I'll ask these you two this because I think Austin you have Game Pass for sure yeah 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 you have yep. Game Pass and I have Game Pass will you pay and the uh, listeners you can chime in as well you can tweet at us at the idiots of Vons. will you pay the thirty five dollar premium upgrade for your Game Pass game to play Starfield early six days is what they're saying six days early you can play Starfield let us know in the comments. Or on YouTube, uh, on the co- in the comments on YouTube or on on Twitter at the Idiot Savants. I'm curious what people are going to say about. That. I'll pay it for sure. Fuck you. <laughs> I didn't pay anything. <laughs> barely. I didn't pay barely anything for Game Pass. I will absolutely try to get the entire week off work, or at least a day. I uh, maybe what, be able when to is it going to release? September sixth is the release date for for Starfield. I still got vacation time. Will it be even, <laughs> will it launch in a playable enough state for me to even bother taking time off from work? What if they push it back? Oh, There's no way. That would there be, is no? absolutely no way. I think this game could release tomorrow. I think they're probably ready for that. They came out and said, um, this was another part of the FTC trial stuff, that Starfield has the least amount of bugs of any Bethesda game at launch. Yeah. But what is that number? Is that yeah, number 2,500? Yeah, yeah. Like, right. is that number 12? And it, are they basing it on, like, a percentage, like, sure. of how much of yeah. the total game? Because <laughs> yeah. it's their biggest game ever. <laughs> so, like, there's only 1% yeah. bugs. Oh only 1% God. bugs in this game, Yeah. <laughs> Which That's is a, a lot. Fantastic, for, yeah. Is yeah. the is the bug list, is the bug punch list, you know, a yeah. percentage. That's a fantastic point, Malcolm. That's how they did it. That's how they could squeeze that phrase in <laughs> right. there. But there's there's so many other bugs that they probably have not found too. A hundred percent. Just because of how big this game is. And then they're basing off like the one percent, you know. Well, this game was supposed to launch Last year in November yeah. was the original twenty November twenty twenty two. Yes, was the reveal launch date, and it got pushed back. And Todd Howard said, uh, "Well, after the fact, this game would have launched in November if they hadn't been purchased by Microsoft. So it was Microsoft's money that allowed them to take time." And make this game better than it was originally going to launch. Mm. Oh. So, and now they don't have PlayStation to worry about. So knowing how Bethesda is, there probably was a lot of bugs. Microsoft purchased it and then told them like, hey, you got to go in and fix all this before we right. launch it. I mean, it got, it was originally November 22. So it was a finished game. And then, and then it was Bethesda's version. Uh, April. <laughs> <laughs> and then they delayed it from April to August, or I'm sorry, September. So they've had, it's been delayed twice from November to, I think it was either April or May, and then pushed back again another six months. So do you think Overlord and Microsoft won't let them push it back? Or do you think that they can't push it back because they have no more money? <laughs> I don't, uh, Microsoft's fucking... I mean, they got unlimited pockets, yeah, right? They've got all that Windows, Azure... Yep. You know, yep. money coming in. They don't even really need Xbox's money. So I don't think I don't think the money's ran out by any stretch of the means. But I think the way that they portrayed this and you know, everybody's talking about this being this showing, this Starfield showing being 
the best press conference ever. <laughs> like, what a dumb thing to even like rank, right? You're like ranking <laughs> fucking ads. It's basically a ranking of ads for, <laughs> you know, it's like a pre sale ad. And I love it. I, I love watching the press conferences and what a, what a silly thing to say, but uh, I love ads. I'll, yeah. <laughs> Because right there in that gameplay that we were just watching, it looked like that uh, creature was coming up to eat him and stuff. Just a random thought, sorry. Uh, how cool would that be if you could get swallowed up by it? Because some of these creatures in there are freaking huge. Like, how cool would that be if you got swallowed up by it and you're like... What if you had a creature who had its own universe in its belly? Is uh, that the kind of game we're getting here? Like at the like, end of MLB, or Men in Black. Exactly. Like, if I get swallowed by the creature. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Every baseball game, if <laughs> right. this happened, <laughs> right. I'd be a season ticket holder. What if, <laughs> what if the creature puts you in a sandwich and then puts chips <laughs> on top of you? <laughs> and then... And then puts the packaging on your ship for decoration. Oh. oh, that was another thing that was really cool. You could customize your ship to whatever color you want. So flaming hot Cheetos color, like a uh, Cheeto chip. Doritos, just gonna be pink for me. Just pink. Yeah, hot straight pink. up pink. Pink with like some dark. Oh well, yeah, because yours is a penis it's shape. A penis ship. So yeah. that yeah, that that's fitting. <laughs> so except for your crew, they're gonna all be all white. We're going to dress in white. Because <laughs> I'm white, I can't have any other... No, because oh. of the sperm. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> wasn't a race thing. It wasn't it's a just, race I was, thing. I was just asking a race the question. Thing. No big it's deal. Biology. It's biology. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal. I'll, I'll have white offspring. I bet you 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and if I don't, you get the joke, it's not my kid. Right? It's not my kid. That's Daniel Tosh's joke. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Kudos to the milkman. Yeah. <laughs> um, boy. Yeah, Starfield looking very, very cool. I don't know where... We're, oh, no, they're that. not going to delay it. There's no way Starfield gets delayed, for sure. Oh. It's too cool. It's too close to launch. There's too much hype with it. There's too many people saying on fucking Twitter that they're going to buy Xboxes to play Starfield. When's the last Microsoft game that came out that you even saw anybody fucking saying that? Who gives a shit? People who own PlayStation don't give a shit about Halo. They don't give a shit about the next Forza. They're playing Gran Turismo. Yeah. Like, none of those are console movers. This game seems to be selling consoles. And if it doesn't do that, it's going to sell Game Pass for sure. Yeah. I want to know to the people that we know that only have PlayStations what their thoughts are. We got to get Justin on, maybe bring the sale back on the show if he wants to come on. Like, I know Justin moved to Chicago, but we, we need him back. They're releasing the For Honor update. What the fuck? They're even still making that game? For Honor has an update? Yeah, that was in the Ubisoft sizzle reel. I know the last one they had was in October... And it was a it was a Halloween kind of special thing. There's like a Jason looking thing running around. I do map. like when people do that. And actually, <laughs> yeah, and you're like four v four, and you're trying to take objectives. And the Jason one was like just attacking you and stuff like that. That was fun. I liked that. All right, let's end this fucking thing. Thank you everybody so much for listening. This has been Crazy Train of Thought episode. Whatever the fuck we're on, brought to you by the Idiot Savants. I have been your host Ryan Wolf. Thank you, Austin Torres, for joining us today. Yes, sir. I appreciate your contributions, Malcolm. Production extraordinaire, thank you. Appreciate you being here. Uh, next week, we'll bring you some uh, Breath of the Wild 2, which I keep calling, that's not the name of that game. It's Tears of the Kingdom is the name <laughs> of that game. I'll have more Mass Effect stuff to talk about. Uh, I beat the first uh, Horizon game. I've been playing through Horizon 2. Um, if you guys want to hear us talk about that, I might have some of that for you next week. I've also been trying JRPGs, even though I seem to hate JRPGs. I don't know why I keep putting myself through through this, but I will tell you what the best JRPG is on Game Pass. All of that next week on Crazy Train of Thought. Good night. That's all, folks. What the fuck? Welcome. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. I fucked it up.
Okay. Welcome, everybody, to Crazy Train of Thought, brought to you by the Idiot Savants. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am your host, Ryan Wolf. We are live from Savant Studios. Joining me today, I have... Austin Torres. The pirouetted piercer himself. Austin Torres is here. Thank you for being here, Austin. Also joining me today... (laughs) (laughs) Producer Malcolm Wilson is here. All right, good. Yeah, that went well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we should probably move the titles with the uh, the main ones when we're doing the intro. Okay. Or I guess... Why? Hmm. Nope, not that one. What are you doing? Whoa. Oh, that's why. Okay. We need, we need to do this again. The whole thing? You can't just splice that out? <laughs> Or keep it. Yeah, fix it in post. <laughs> Just fix it in post. Fix it in post. No big deal. <laughs> All right, you want to... Okay, we can do a smooth... We can try a smoother one. Uh, I, I think I should probably stick with the 3P, uh, the three-person main to make it... Yeah, you got a lot to do. You got a lot of buttons to push. Yeah. And so you got to jump back and forth on that screen. Push it to buttons. <laughs> 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 it's a difficult job. <laughs> Austin realizes why I'm over here. <laughs> like it's not, it's not special or anything. It's to keep me out of out of the way. <laughs> Malcolm, just press the one fucking button right there. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> All right. So are we redoing this? I don't know. Okay. Well, it's up to you. Captain. Well, yeah, I mean, I feel like maybe it didn't go very well. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Deleted scenes extra. Okay. At some point. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put it at the end. <laughs>